Hey everyone, Marcus Philly here with Functional Bodybuilding. In a recent video with my friend Ben Patrick, the knees over toes guy, I introduced you to five movements that can get you out of knee pain and how you can incorporate them into your workouts using functional bodybuilding principles. Well, today we're going one step further to answer a common question that you've had if you've ever encountered pain or injury before. And that question is, I've gotten out of pain, so now what? Now, take a minute to pause. If you're still having knee pain, I highly recommend you check out Ben's programs that I'll link to in the description below. He'll show you how to resolve knee pain through movements and maintain your levels of strength. But what many people also wanna know is how you can progress your athleticism after a setback and how to train your full body to look good and move well while also honing great movement practices that won't send you right back down into the pain and injury cycle. So today, Ben brought his wife and his family, his dog Lucky, also that we could show you a simple functional bodybuilding workout that you can do that can be scaled to meet your skill level and needs. See, I wrote this workout for Ben or somebody like him that wants to do another type of training but also benefit from the aesthetics, strength, and conditioning progress that you can make within functional bodybuilding. So while workouts in my full program usually take between 60 and 90 minutes, this one's gonna be able to be done in about 30 to 40 and still leave you with time for other activities and pursuits that you're into. All right, let's take a look at the workout itself. Oftentimes, we will start functional bodybuilding with a warm-up, and an effective warm-up is as simple often as implementing training exercises that you're gonna see in the training session ahead, but just doing them fully regressed down in a format like a body weight or assisted version of that exercise. So the perfect example of that is that we're going to be doing weighted ATG split squats in our workout today. And in the warm up, you're going to see that same powerful movement for strengthening your knees, ankles and hips, the ATG split squat. You're going to see it done with body weight or assistance. The goal here with the movement points of performance are you're aiming to cover your calf with your entire hamstring and maybe even your glute while keeping the torso tall and the back leg straight. The magic in this movement is in choosing the right variation for your own level of strength and mobility. And as you move, you may find that can move from an assisted version to an unassisted version, or you can always stay in an assisted squat to help you find that full range of motion, which is most important in that exercise. In our warm up, we're also going to be doing a few band pull aparts. Uh, this is an upper body work uh, that is helpful for getting you prepped for the strength work to come, which is going to include ring rows and some pull-ups. See, band pull-aparts are a simple and scalable way to engage the rotator cuff and the upper back muscles before you get into those pull-ups and those rows. All right, the way we are structuring this strength piece makes it such that we don't need a tremendous amount of warm-up. We just need some movement prep and we can get right into the functional bodybuilding strength component of this workout. We often superset our strength movements to allow you to be efficient with your time and also not to tax opposing muscle groups. And that's an important part of the prescription. We definitely prioritize tempo and range of motion. Both of these will maximize your time under tension on the muscle tissue. See the total time that you're under load is much more impactful for these training formats than the total number of reps and the weight that you lift. What we're looking for is that you're gonna get 30 to 60 seconds of work on every single set. So stay diligent about your rest periods and get the right stimulus here by doing so. What you'll notice in this prescription is that there are ranges of reps, sets, and rest times. This isn't random. In fact, with very specific prescriptions to these variables, we're able to intentionally progress you week by week, rather than just hope for the best with your training results. In functional bodybuilding progressions, over time we can add more sets, as well as decrease rest times between movements. These are all ways to challenge you without necessarily having to add more weight to the bar or pick up heavier dumbbells, which can often compromise the quality of the athlete's movement doing the workout. If you were thinking this, or maybe you're thinking this, hey Marcus, there's no way I can crank out 10 strict pull-ups. Don't worry, since every single functional bodybuilding workout has movement regressions, these will also help you develop the strength to increase your pull-up ability over time. So as an example with the strict pull-up, we can regress it in any one of the following three ways. Number one, you could perform a band-assisted strict pull-up. You would perform it maybe with the same reps and the same tempo as the prescribed strict pull-up. Alternatively, you could do a pull-up negative. This is where you jump up chin over the bar and you lower yourself slowly to the bottom of the range of motion. You do that for anywhere from four to six seconds per rep and maybe you hit five reps 
in place of your strict pull-ups. Lastly, you could do a lat pull-down or a banded lat pull-down if you don't have access to a lat pull-down machine. And that, again, could be done at the same reps, the same tempo as the strict pull-up that was prescribed, just making it much more accessible to somebody who doesn't have that strength component yet in the strict pull-up. The same thing goes for the ATG split squat. I even showed you already in the warm-up, we can do this assisted or with body weight. But as you can see in the actual training workout, we had four different levels of athletes all training the movement at different levels that work for them. Somebody using a barbell on their back, that was me, at 50% of my body weight. Somebody else using kettlebells on each side of their body uh, at 25% of their body weight per hand. We could also substitute in dumbbells at, at your side, elevate the front foot onto a box, or again, perform these at body weight following the prescription that you saw already in the same superset combination to achieve the same strength and hypertrophy benefits. So he's still going for that really nice hamstring covered calf. He's crushing my fingers there. Feeling those back hip flexor stretch. Oh yeah. So the best load is the one that stretches you deepest. If you go too heavy, you'll shorten up. If you go too light, it won't stretch you down. But it's a gradual process because we're only talking about the load you can do without any pain. Okay, as I said at the beginning, this is a condensed short workout, 30 to 40 minutes in total. So we're right around the 15 to 20 minute mark and we've already finished our warm up and our strength component. And now we're gonna dive right into our conditioning finisher. Functional bodybuilding is very thoughtful with conditioning. We wanna make sure that we're getting the right result. And it's not just a random hit of intensity that will spike your heart rate with no purpose. The aim here is to build your work capacity through exposing your body to tasks under fatigue. And the challenge is to do so without losing movement quality as you go through the exercises. I stress this so much when I talk to coaches that this, the thoughtful selection of exercises is what's going to make this possible. See, by keeping the complexity low enough for an athlete at hand, we ensure that we can get the work done safely and still challenge their capacity. When working under fatigue, it isn't the time to try out some super hard exercise that is better for the Instagram highlight reel than it is for actual fitness. All right, let's come back to regressions. If you were intimidated by some of the numbers or the movements that you saw on the screen or that you're seeing being demoed right here, don't stress, right? Just like the strength portion of the training session, you can regress these movements, reps, and loads all together. With each movement, you can see how various athletes are approaching them in their own unique way. The slant board goblet squats can regress down to body weight only as an example. Ring rows get progressively easier as you just change the angle of your body. So whether you're advanced or you're relatively new to training, you're gonna be able to tackle that exercise. Leg tucks can also be performed in a dip support position or even seated on a bench rather than hanging from the bar. And of course, a weighted version of the leg tuck can always be regressed down to a body weight version too. And again, depending on your level, the weight that we have on the sled that you see us pulling backwards can be stripped down considerably, even to the point where you might even simply just walk backwards for 100 meters at a good pace. Now, the last point is that there are 60 repetitions of each exercise in this conditioning workout, minus the sled dragging but we could easily scale that down to 50 or even 30 reps by just changing the repetition prescription that you saw on the screen to begin with. Now, I also wanna take a moment to touch on progression, right? We've talked about scaling back and regressing, but this conditioning piece also progresses over time. We build some sneaky strength work into these movements and into these workout formats so that you'll get stronger and when you get stronger, you can add load to the sled, you can add load to the goblet squat, you can add load to the leg tucks, and you can even progress the ring rows to something that is more difficult for you. We call this format functional pump conditioning at Functional Bodybuilding, and you'll find it throughout all of our programs. But this particular piece was designed specifically to include those movements that will strengthen your knees, hips, and ankles. All right, when we strip down functional bodybuilding to its essence, here's what you're gonna find. Number one, thoughtful joint specific prep that doesn't throw away your precious warm up time. Two, a balance of movement patterns and intensity efforts throughout a given week. Three, progressive strength work that prioritizes movement quality so you can build muscle but still move beautifully. And then four, purposeful conditioning that supports your goal, whether that's to become fast and powerful or 
in, the, in this case, build strength and muscle while still maintaining and incorporating knee-friendly movements. And I'll remind you the initial question that we asked, hey, I'm out of knee pain, now what? Well, the work that you saw today is now part of a series that Ben is incorporating into his own training. And you can sign up for my email list in the description below for more looks at functional bodybuilding training that you can do to get back into the gym after pain. You'll also get free training nutrition resources on building muscle, keeping your body strong and healthy for decades to come. So go sign up now and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.